Welcome to Shower Talk with Allie, where no topic is off limit. Hope you guys are having a great day. Today I wanted to talk to you about a topic really near and dear to my heart called pressure sores. And it's a very scary word. Before I tell you all about my year in bed, yes, I spent an entire year in bed and I know many people have spent way longer. Please don't forget to like and subscribe my channel if you guys are interested in the kind of things I'm talking about. Also, don't forget to comment on topics you want me to talk about. Nothing's on limit, off limits, sex, you know, bowel, bladder, you name it, depression. Um, I will cover it all. Anyway, I have every person with paralysis always has a secondary complication they suffer from. My little demon are pressure sores, and they are little demons. I've suffered on and off from them. And for those of you who don't know, really quick lesson, there's four stages of pressure sore. If you are have pressure on your skin for more than two hours in the same spot, you get a little red mark. That's called the pressure sore, stage one. And your skin dies from the inside out. And they can go all the way down the bone. I had this. And so that's a real challenge. So the challenge with pressure sores is that when you don't have good circulation and you're paralyzed, it can take forever for pressure sore to heal and you have to go through a lot of different steps. It can be a real nightmare. I'll put some links below, Here's my little pause, put some links below so you can read about pressure sores. Anyway, I was born with an extra vertebrae in my tailbone and when I was living in China from 2013 to 15, another cool story of why I went to China for surgery, I will, I will definitely get into that with you guys. But when I came back from China and I moved to Raleigh, North Carolina where I live right now, I developed this pressure sore on and off and it would open up and it would get down to the fat layer. It was right on my tailbone, right on my butt. So I would spend a month in bed, turning left and right every few hours because you can't stay in the same spot at the same time. And it got so bad. I had multiple wound doctors and we had, oh gosh, we had so many tapes and bandages and creams and you name it. And I had to literally pack my wound on my butt because it was that wide. It was about four centimeters deep. And spoiler alert, just <laughs> I'm preparing you guys right now. There's a picture I'm about to show you in, of my pressure sore. You can't see my whole butt, you can only see this sore. In five, four, three, two, one. Ah! Yes, definitely gross. But that's life, right? These are the nitty gritty. You hear about pressure sores, but did you really want to see them? So I had these wound doctors and they couldn't heal the sore. I was dating a guy at the time. I could barely get up. I was in bed already. I don't know, maybe four or five months at that point. So I fired all of my wound doctors because it wasn't getting better. I employed a plastic surgeon and he said, oh kiddo, I know what's wrong with you. You have an extra vertebrae in your tailbone. So no matter what you do, this like bone is always going to keep popping out of your body. So let's do something called a coxagectomy. I was like, a coxa what? Basically, they slice you open and they shave down your tailbone and they stitch you back up. I was like, great, rock star, let's do it. I did that, but he didn't put, the surgeon didn't put a drainage tube in. And so I was bleeding back into my body. And so about six weeks after my surgery in 2016, um, he opened the stitches and this giant wound popped open. And um, I'll show you the progression you know, as I'm talking. And I cried. And he said, well, you're gonna have to get a wound vacuum. A wound what? It's basically where they stuff this gauze into the hole and it's a vacuum seal and it's supposed to promote collagen growth and heal up the wound. So I did that for a few months. During the time when I was trying to heal that, that's when I went on a lot of my dating experiments. Another story, stay tuned. That's a really good one. Anyway, so I had this wound vacuum and we were planning and it wasn't closing up. It was getting smaller, but the inside was still, like, it was tunneling. So it was like this giant tunnel inside my wound, but the outside looked like it was closing up. So we were going in for this major surgery called the flap surgery, where they basically slice off uh, one side of your butt cheek and cut off the pressure sore in the middle, and they pull the skin over. And when they do this, there's an arterial vein in your, your buttocks. So good blood supply, good blood flow. And I said, okay, great, let's do that. But it's a serious recovery. It's got 80% chance of success with surgery, but probably a 50, 60% chance of failure in recovery because these stitches, they basically go down right to the rectum area and that's where you have to poop. 
And if you get poop in the wound, then it's gonna open up and it's gonna get infected. It's not really pretty. So I had my mom, she did my job program and helped me go to the bathroom for months. Probably something you didn't wanna know, but that's just what I went through. And I went through this surgery and I had a specialized bed. It was like, I was called um, a special air loss bed where it was like I was floating on a cloud. And I was in bed for yet another six months while dating a new guy who is now my husband. And I will go into all the surgery details of what happened in the surgery in another video. But when I was in bed, I, I mean, think about it. I was in bed for nearly a year. I only saw four walls. I didn't have cool art on my walls or anything. And how did I not go absolutely insane? There were times where I got really depressed, but I thought to myself, okay, you've got to survive this. You have to get through this. Well, how are you going to get through this? Well, that is completely a mental game. So I set up a schedule for myself. I still got up at 5.30 in the morning because I'm absolutely crazy. I would do my bell program in the morning. I would turn in bed. I had a schedule for trading. I was day trading. And then I had an hour or two where I would read something interesting on a topic of physics or science or another topic that was just fun for me that didn't have anything to do with my life. And then I would meditate. I learned to, I tried self-hypnosis, hypnosis, I had therapists, and I would listen to music and somebody talking to me, and I would like transport myself into this little alley world, I called it. And this alley world, I created it actually um, on the computer. There's this little red door I went into. And as you can see, you have the little red door, and I had a little island, and... Then there was a little dock that I would relax on and there was a cloud with my cat up there and I would pop on the cloud and hang out with my cat and then I would go swim by the mountains and I'd go swim in the ocean and I literally lived in this little world every day. I did it for about an hour and it's really cool that I, that I was able to kind of graphically create it, kind of like a fifth grader, but I did it nonetheless. Okay, so back to strategy. So if you're suffering from something that's keeping you in the hospital or keeping you in bed. It's so important to keep your mind engaged. You have to stay engaged. It's so easy to stop and feel sorry for yourself. And trust me, I did it. It's okay to feel sorry for yourself, but just not for long extended periods of time. And then I would call my friends on the phone and I have an hour of chat with people. And then I got really involved in Spinal Cord Facebook groups. It's the first time I had done that. It was I think 2016 at that point. And I realized that I'm not alone, that so many of us suffer from these awful, awful pressure sores. One, one girl I talked to, she was in bed for nearly two years and she had two flap surgeries. So they take two pieces of your butt cheeks. And I, I'm in the links below, I could put a little bit what flap surgery is like. And I asked her how she, she was really, really depressed. So we got to talking every single day and that's super helpful, finding people. I know their expression, misery loves company, and that's fair, I get that. But what about people that suffer the same challenges love company, right? So you can talk about your challenges, but then perhaps offer advice and comfort how the other person can get through their day if they're having a really, really bad day. That's particularly what I like to do. I mean, I love to help people, that's my mission. And whether you laugh or cry after this video or you learn something interesting, I mean, that's pretty much my only goal um, with all of my video diaries. Now, because I'm a little bit of an extremist and I like to do things for the story, that's when I did go on my online dating wacky adventure is why I had this big wound, wound vacuum attached to my butt. Um, again, I will, get, I will get into all those stories, but most people probably won't go to those extremes and most people looked at me like I was crazy trying to date the giant hole in my butt covering it up with a band-aid <laughs> you know so as the surgery date approached I was preparing and once I had the surgery I mean it was very strategic we had to make sure the wound was clean and when they were taking the gosh I think I had 400 state um, stitches 400 stitches and 200 staples or so and when I got those taken out, my mom took a magnifying glass and she had to make sure that the, the surgeon got all the stitches and he didn't because that can lead to so many medical complications. I mean, the list goes on of secondary medical complications that many of us with spinal cord injury and disability and paralysis deal with. 
treasure source is just particularly nasty because there's not just like a quick fix that you can heal this, right? Because we're, our butts are, we're lodged in this wheelchair. We can't just get off and pressure release. We have to tilt our wheelchairs back or have people help us turn us in bed. I mean, a pressure sore is not a single person event. You need so many people in the background helping. And I had family and I had friends and I had caregivers. And, you know, support is so key. I see so many of these channels with all of these really cool disability advocates and people showing their lives, but not a lot of people behind the scenes. So I really hope to get into that in my channel if people will let me, um, if they're not social media shy. So that's just a little bit about my year in bed. You know, I could definitely elaborate on more. And I hope the pictures didn't scare you too much. But, you know, it's a real issue. And so every time you look at somebody in a wheelchair or with a disability, sometimes it's really interesting to think, what are they going through? They look happy-go-lucky, but my God, they might have a four centimeter hole in their body and I can't even see it. Um, I just, I love to shed light on, you know, new topics and things that people don't really think about, right? I do that when I see somebody silent and invisible disabilities. The point is that when I see people, I always try to treat them with kindness. That is like my number one motto in life. Be kind. Even if people aren't kind to you, that means there's something wrong in their day or they're just grumpy. And I just, I won't get to that level. I just want to be a happy, dark humor enthusiast, wacky, quirky, quad as I call myself. <laughs> So with that, I hope you guys have a great day, a little bit into my life of a year in bed, and I will catch you guys on the flip side. Bye.